thanks guys for uh, jumping on today. It's, uh, it's, it's great to be back at Rutgers. Uh, you know, my family and I are excited to, to move back. It's kind of been uh, a place we've always considered home. We had a great time there the, the first time around. It's, it's, it's great to be back with Coach Giano and the staff that he's put together. And, you know, we're excited to, to start moving forward uh, and hopefully get back on campus sooner than later and, and uh, you know, start building this thing back to, to where we want it to go. Here, we'll go down the list that I just went through. We'll start with Bobby. So two questions, and then we'll move on. If you're not asking a question, just a reminder to please mute your line. So, Bobby? Okay, Coach, congrats on the return. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's uh, excited to, to get the actual return going and get after it. Okay. What has it been like, you know, it's obviously an unprecedented time. What's it been like for you these past couple months, you know, having to recruit from basically kind of quarantine? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it forces you to, to, to kind of think outside the box. But in essence, we're trying to do all the same things that we've done uh, that we would do if we were in the office. You know, we get up in the morning, we, we, we meet as a defensive staff, we spend time with our players, uh, we spend a large portion of our afternoons on virtual tours, talking to guys on the phone, text, that type of thing. So we're, we're really basically building a, a remote routine that we would do as if we were back in our office right from Piscataway. Okay, and I wanted to ask you more X's and O's question. Um, a popular topic of conversation has been that defensive end position over the years, the weak side position. It's been a rush end. It's been it was a, uh, a jack under the last coaches. It's kind of like that hybrid. How do you see it playing out in your defense? You know, it's uh, you know, it's going to be multiple. You know, it, number one thing I think you got to understand about us is we want to get back to playing a fast, physical brand of football. So whatever that spot is called, however we find the right guy to fit that spot, you know we got to be able to put pressure on the quarterback at that position, but also to have the multiplicity to do some different things in coverage and use them in coverage. So you know for us right now it's about finding the right guys and putting them in the best position to be successful, and that'll kind of shape that you know quote unquote rushing rush end position for us. Yeah, right. Thank you. Absolutely. James Cratch. Um, I guess, big picture, how far behind do you think you are in terms of installing the defense if you had had a full spring practice? I know you have the eight hours a week with the players, and I guess how difficult is it to install the defense the way you are currently doing it? Obviously, you have no control over that. Right. You know, I, I think the thing that we're just focused on is, hey, we are where we are right now, and, and, and this is what it is. So uh, the one thing i gotta I got to give our players a lot of credit for, whatever we've asked them, do, they've done. They've been they've been excellent in, in, in their attention to detail. When we've been able to do some things with them, with WebEx meetings or you know unit meetings or position meetings, wh whatever it's been. Uh, so I feel like we're we're, we're moving along in, in our install. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for us is we just haven't had a chance to work with the guys on the field, and that's really where we're. Um, you know, we haven't had a chance to do that yet, and that's that's just kind of the rules that everybody's playing by. I know we're a new staff, but uh, when we get back. You know, I think our coaching staff has done a fantastic job of, of, of installing so far. And when we get back, we'll get a chance to work with them on the field and, and, and go full speed ahead. And what's maybe a complicated question. What's your philosophy on tackling? That's been a, a major issue for the defense the last few years. And there's been a lot of explosive plays. I mean, how do you kind of teach tackling, coach it? How do you approach that? You know, I, you know our tackling system is, is kind of what we did here before. And, and you know, we took that system, took it to Tampa Bay, and, and, and had some. Uh, there's different metrics in the National Football League that, that uh, you know, uh, great tackling, and, and that helped us with negative plays and things of that nature. So, you know, we're we're not a rugby uh, style tackling team. We have a little bit different uh, system uh, than that. But the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we're going to have our eyes up, we're going to have our head up. We feel that that's the, the way we play safe, and uh, you know, we're. We're going to tackle kind of the way that, that we used to. Thanks, Rob. Absolutely. Chris Nowalski. Hey, what's going on? Oh, hold on. Unmute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, hey, what's going on, Coach? How's it going? Good, good, good. So I just had a question. Um, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, your defensive line, your guys added a lot of transfers. Was that kind of like a, like a key thing that you guys wanted to do? You know, I think anytime you step into a new program, you're always trying to build build uh, build your roster. You know, 
Coach Giano, he's our he's our general manager, and, and he's always trying to make our our football team better, make our organization better. So anytime that, that uh, you get an addition that you feel is, is going to be a great part of the culture that Coach is building, I think it's it's a positive for us. But you know, obviously, we, you know, our goal as as coaches is we want to build the best roster with the best people that we can. Yeah, and then um, I'm sure you got a chance to look at the film of the guys from from last season and stuff. Um, has anybody stood out to you from from, from doing that? You know, I, really, what, what we I've, I've certainly looked at the film. I I think our whole defensive staff. I know our whole defensive staff has, but you know, really, in a lot of ways, we want to have a clean slate, and and we just want to kind of get a general idea with some things. But really, it's a clean slate when these guys get a chance to work with us in training camp. We're going to get a chance to, you know, we're not going to let anything from before kind of jade or or, or affect our our, uh, our analysis on, on what our guys can and can't do. So uh, I'm excited to actually just get back and work with them, and that's where we'll kind of make some uh, make some decisions on on who can help us and who can help us where. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right, Tom Canavan. Hey, Rob. How are you? Very good. The sun's out here uh, in the Midwest, so that's a positive today. <laughs> the question I have is, you're a little younger than I am, but how have you had to adjust to virtual teaching? Have you Were you experienced before this, or do you have you know, a teenage daughter who's uh, giving you the ins and outs, or what? You know, it's like anything, right? It's like anything in competitive sports, right? You're trying to find an advantage. On, on a daily basis, and, and I would not certainly not consider myself technologically uh, savvy, you know, from that standpoint. But uh, you, you figure it out. I mean, that's the one thing that coach spends a lot of time telling our players: you just got to figure it out. And you know, you find ways through uh, virtual meetings. You find ways to virtually recruit. I got to. I got to listen. The IT expert in my house is my wife. <laughs> You know, like we ran a Cat 5 board. I don't even know what a Cat 5 is. I don't know why it's a Dog 5 or a Cat 5 or whatever it is, but she figured out how to make our video go smoother. And, you know, so you, you just find ways and you use the resources you have available. But, uh, you know, that, that's coaching, right? That's that's anything, right? When you're, when you're, you're competing, you got to find ways to, to be productive and, and get your message across. And that's, I think our staff's doing a really great job of that. And I think Coach Giano's doing a great job of leading the way. Super. The other question I have is, you talked about multiple on defense. Is there a base? I mean, are you 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, or is it all going to be whatever you see out there and you make your decision then? You know, the, uh, I think that's kind of football nowadays, right? You know, I mean, uh, the number here, this is what I can tell you. You know, with our job on defense, right, is, is obviously to stop an offense. I mean, that's, I know, I, I'm not saying that to be kind of a, a smart, smart aleck or anything, but so when you want to stop an offense, you got to stop the quarterback, right? That's where everything goes right now in college football. It's really the quarterback and the play caller. So for us, whether it's 4-3, three, 3-4, three, I mean, we're going to have both of those principles, you know, within our repertoire. But at the end of the day, we got to find the right guys and put them in the best position to be successful. And that's really the process that we're going through right now as we meet with our guys. And, and that process will even expand when we get uh, – when we get into uh, you know actual training camp, get a chance to work with them more on the field. So, you know, I think you got to have you know multiple principles within your defense. I mean, to me, it comes down to a core philosophy, right? We want to put pressure on the quarterback. We want to put pressure on the play caller. In order to be successful, we got to be able to stop the run. It was alluded to earlier. We got to be able to eliminate the big plays. And then, really, probably the biggest thing is we got to find ways to create takeaways and get the ball back to our offense. So. How those goals and, and fit into our our scheme, we're really kind of figuring that out in terms of where we can put our players in the best position to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. Move right, to Richie Schneider. <laughs> hey, Coach. Hope all is well with you and your family. So uh, the first question I got for you, I know you kind of mentioned it in your introduction a little bit, but what's it like being back at Rutgers, and what stands out since you haven't been here in, uh, I guess, eight years now? You know, the, uh, I think the big thing, uh, listen, we came back to Rutgers because of, of, of Coach Giano. Uh, you know, the, I don't think there's a guy in the world that, that I feel more philosophically aligned with in terms of how to run a program and, and, and develop young men. So it, it, it's awesome to be 
a part of that. My kids, they were, you know, they were young elementary school kids when, when we left here, even preschool, and they kind of always considered Rutgers some. So we're, we're excited to be back in, in the state of New Jersey. You know, I think the biggest thing that it's been great uh, since we've been back, and, and I think it's it's really generated a lot of interest from the fans. We're excited. The excitement is, hey, we're in the Big Ten, and Rutgers has made a commitment now to, to – to, to win championships, and that's because of Coach, and, and that's why I'm here. I know that, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't be doing this if he didn't feel he was in a place where he could develop young men and win championships, and and, and, and that's why we're excited to be back. Yeah, so the second one I got for you is, <clears throat> last time you were here was 2012 season. You guys had eight, nine, nine wins, I believe it was. What's it going to take to rekindle that type of success here? You know, it, it, it's the culture and it's the people w w within the organization. And, and right now, I think we have the, the best guy in the world to, to lead us in Coach Shiano. And, and you know, I, I think he's doing a tremendous job with our players in terms of, of building the culture. And, you know, it, it ultimately comes down to, to, to getting the, the best players on the field. And, that, and that's what we're working for. But, you know, the, the, the eight, nine wins and going to bowl games and, and – you know, putting players in the you know in the National Football League, you know that's that's really that's a result, right? And you know, really, what drives that is the process and the culture. And, and I think Coach has done a fantastic job, just kind of you know outlining our, our way of life within the program. And, and and as we keep you know grinding towards that on a daily basis or chopping towards that on a daily basis, I think we'll uh, I, I think we'll all be, be be very pleased with the results down the road. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Chris Eisman. Hey, Rob. How are you? Very good. Um, you guys, obviously, you and several of the other coaches have relationships with coaches, high school coaches throughout the state. I mean, what's that been like, John, of rebuilding those relationships now and the time you've been back, and, and what's their reaction been like to you guys? It, it's, it's been awesome. You know, like uh, when we were back on campus, uh, I know the, the New Jersey Coaches uh, Association would meet there, and you'd walk down the hall, and, and you'd see a lot of old faces and I shouldn't call them old faces but get to get to see some some old friends again and and, and that's been great and listen you know football any you know any sports a, a people business and, and and I think we're in a spot where there there's tremendous high school coaches and and I think there's tremendous relationships with a lot of people on our staff with those coaches and I, and I think that's not only going to make Rutgers better but make the state of uh you know football in, in the whole state of New Jersey better too and that that's what What's exciting? I mean, that's that's really what football is about. It at its core, in its essence, it, its relationships. And I think, uh, 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 you know, obviously starting with coach and, and other members of our staff, I think the relationships that we have are, are going to make football better at Rutgers and in the state of New Jersey. And then second, um, I guess just what when you look at the defense that you have and the players that you have, I mean, what are, how are you kind of outlining your goals for what you want to accomplish with it? Accomplish with that unit this year? You know, I, I think we, we, we have goals that, you know, that they change daily, right? Like, so right now we're in a phase where we're, we're, we're you know, learning a system. We're, we're developing chemistry on a defense, and we're doing that differently. It's it's virtually, right? But, uh, you know, we're just going to take things one step at a time, one day at a time, and, and not so much focus on the, 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 the long end of things. But if we can, you know, we're going to have tasks that we got to meet each day, and, and as long as we keep kind of checking those tasks off, the list and, and and moving forward and taking steps forward on a daily basis. I think when we when we pop up and come out on the other side, we'll uh, be very very happy about where we are. Thanks, Rob. Fooch, did you want to ask a question? Fooch, welcome back to Rutgers. Uh, question for you. Absolutely, Coach. Uh, Coach assembled a uh, pretty interesting defensive staff that uh, you're going to spend a lot of time with. Can you give us a little uh, your thoughts on some of these guys? I know you worked with a couple. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what. You know, you kind of heard me allude to it a few times. You know, it's when you're building a culture, it's really about the people. And, and I, I think Coach has done a, a phenomenal job of building a staff across the board and, and, and really excited about the people I get a chance to work with every day on defense. Uh, you know, we have a, you know, probably the top lieutenant in the in the uh, Shiano regime, Coach Bob Frazier, is our linebacker coach. He's been been with Coach. I mean, he's he's a fantastic football coach. He coached me in college. You know, I have the utmost respect for him and and uh, and his knowledge. He does a super job with the linebackers, and uh, you know, he's a, he's a big part of what we're doing. 
uh, Jim Panagos had a chance to work with Jimmy before. You know, his guys do an excellent job. They play hard. He does a great job building relationships. The guys really look to him for leadership. He gets us going, and, uh, you know, it's great to have him. And then I'll tell you what, I hadn't had a chance to work with Fran Brown before, but, I, you know, I, I've kind of known him through a, a, a few other mutual friends in the profession and certainly known of him. And uh, he's been an awesome addition uh, in, in, into this, uh, in, into our family and into our system. And, you know, he's a tremendous secondary coach. He's a fantastic recruiter. Uh, he's a great guy to have on staff. So the guys that I get, the, the full-time guys that I get the chance to be in there with on a daily basis are, are excellent and uh, it's fun to work with. And then the, the other neat thing is, you know, I, I look across the table, there's a Jamal Western, a, a Charlie Noonan, a Damaso Munoz, a Kevin Snyder, you know, guys that have played for us in our in our defense before and, and what they can bring to the table and that, how they can help mold our players. It's just, uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we're not in a staff room right now, but we're all on together virtually, uh, you know, every morning at, uh, at 7 a.m. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's great to be be with those guys and each of them brings a unique, a, a unique perspective to things and and a strength that, that I think is going to make us better as a whole. Thank you. All right, so we'll open it up for a few more follow-ups. Anybody want to go ahead? Right. Well, the crash here. Pass rush, that's been another thing that the Rutgers kind of struggled with. Do you think that everything with the defense kind of falls into place once you have an efficient pass rush? You know, I, I certainly agree. And, and whether it's pass rush or just, the, you know, putting pressure on the quarterback, even in certain quarterback run game scenarios, you know, like I said before, it all starts. You got to put a. You have to. You have to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. So, it, it, you know, we, we have a saying kind of that, that it's 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 technique and scheme, right? So, you know, as coaches, we got to give our players the best techniques, uh, you know, available to uh, to execute. And then it's our job in terms of scheme to make sure that we get those guys. And whether it's movement, whether it's a variety of different things we do, pressure or whatever. But we've got to find ways to create pass rush because certainly, you know, if, if we don't put pressure on the quarterback, I think that uh, puts us behind the eight ball a little bit. Coach, it's Bobby again. Um, what ways do you think you've changed as a coach this time around? And how much have you grown in what ways? Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a big believer that, you know, you just, you got to learn and you got to grow on a, on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, there's obviously been there's been some ups and downs since I was here at, at Rutgers last, but uh, I think uh, you know just seeing some different ways of doing things and different perspectives of things, and, and I'll tell you what else has been great. You know, uh, I, Coach and I have obviously stayed in great contact through the years, but uh, you know, and, and talked a lot of football. But to kind of be apart for a little bit and, and, and come back together, especially with the other guys on the staff, it's been uh, it's been great. It's just you know. Not that our core philosophies has changed, but maybe we look at things a little bit uh, differently at times. But that's part of natural growth. That's part of tweaking the system. And but uh, you know, I think you got to grow and, and learn. And uh, you know, and like I said before, it really comes down to the people. And and when, when you know, coach has really put me in a, in a good position because he's surrounded you know our defensive staff with what I think are, are really good people. And that and that makes it uh, makes it fun to work and and grow and learn together. Any further questions? Rob, I guess, did you watch a lot of Rutgers last year? I know you were an analyst today and now. Did you see a lot of their games? I know Greg has said he watched a lot. You know, I, I'd be lying if I tell you I didn't. I, you know, I, I, I've been at other stops, Tampa Bay, Arkansas, you know, other play fitness. And I, I always followed Rutgers, right? You know, it's, uh, I kind of, Rutgers has a special place in my heart. You know, it's kind of where I got a chance to cut my teeth uh, in coaching and, you know, so if the game was on TV, I I didn't go past it. I'd watch it absolutely. You know, so you got a chance to see some things here and there over the years, and uh, so. But at the same point in time, I don't want that to necessarily affect the, the uh, opinions and, and give our guys a, a clean slate as, as we move into a chance that match on the field. All right, final question. Anyone? All right, we'll wrap it up there then. Thanks, Coach, for joining us today. Guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe.
Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.